then we instantiate this formula like copy and paste but substitute n equals to zero inside then we increment n by one yeah and check is n equals to one exceeding k minus one our k is two right so k minus one is one so n is equal to k minus one but that's okay it's inclusive so we have to do the term copying again and that means it is uh, 1.5 to the power of to the power of 1 times or rather divided by 1 factorial all right and then we increment n by 1 and then now is 2 is 2 greater than 2 minus 1 answer is yes so we stop and that's it that's our first term in the denominator as simple as that okay so if you find that I'm just writing it out in a slow way, I'm not trying to show you how I do it. I will be doing this in my exam too, because you shouldn't try to calculate and evaluate and simplify at the same time, because you cannot go back and trace where you did wrongly. Right? It's not so much of writing more working to get more marks, but also helping yourself to trace through, be because uh, this, this calculation is not trivial. Uh, we don't want our time to be wasted on making silly mistakes and then it propagates forward and you can't trace back what where was the problem. So plus the first term is 1 over uh, k factorial, right? So that's 2 factorial. Then multiplied by 1.5 to, to the power of 2 k square, uh, uh, um, implied utilization square, then times, uh, times uh, k, 2 divided by 2 minus 1.5 okay got that yeah so now that we have written out very accurately from symbol to substituted values now we can perform maybe a, a, a quick first level first cut uh, first cut uh, simplification first cut meaning we don't touch the calculator yet what whichever is symbolically easy to cancel out or, or evaluate or cross out or, or delete we do that first like the first term is a waste of time to press calculator so anything raised to the power of zero is one one divided by zero factorial you should remember this right zero factorial is one one over one we get one now anything to the power of one is that anything itself divided by one factorial which is one so we get back 1.5 you see so without even uh leaving my hand off the pen on my my uh you know keyboard to to waste time on pressing the calculator keys i already got the first term simplified to something that i can even continue calculating right so then we have 0 0.5 because one divided by two factorial that's two so 0 0.5 times here's where we need help 1.5 uh square and i would have to then take out my calculator to do 1.5 square and that gives me 2.25 all right then times 2 divided by 0 0.5 that means 2 times 2 that's 4 if you can't get it just press calculator okay so up to here we have uh, basically let's just evaluate directly so 2.5 plus 0.5 times 2.25 times 4 so we have 7 all right and that's not it because that's d that's not that's why i cho chose a different letter to remind myself that don't be so happy don't be so excited after the hard work we are not done yet because p0 is actually 1 divided by d and now it's life is easy because that's just 1 0 0.1428 so our p0 can be systematically carefully calculated if you do it step by step don't jump the gun like what i just showed you okay so that i can always and i'm very sure that i will always do it correctly not only correctly but first time correctly i don't have to go back why is this negative probability and then uh, not sure where i messed up you see okay so that's for p0 and p0 needs to be absolutely correctly calculated so that you can plug in feet forward so what happens if the question asks for p2 you will have to find p0 anyways there's no running away all right so once you found p0 then the rest will be uh, substituting 2 if your k is 2 so from 1 to 2 
P2, you will use this formula. All right. Happens that uh, when, for this formula, they cross over at K. That is to say, if, if just as I said, find P2 where K is also equal to 2, right? So it does not matter which term you use, they are the same. So they cross over, they will always be giving exactly the same number. So it doesn't matter, but only for the case of K. Anything that's less than K, find P1, you will use this formula, the first one. Find P345, uh, you will have to find using the second term. And notice that all these involve P0. There's no running away. The first form is a sort of a recurrence kind of form. You take the previous value of uh, K, uh, is that right? Uh, yeah, you need the previous value, right, to feed forward, to calculate uh, P of K, find P of K first, and then substitute in and don't do all this. But P of K, to find P of K, you will still need P0. So maybe it's just easier to use P, P0. So to find P0, we use that formula, and then we substitute by multiplying into this. And here we have a lambda over mu factor here again, right? So be very, very... Uh, correct about your lambda over mu. If you mess up lambda over mu, everything is wrong. And you might be surprised. Your probability is greater than 1 or negative, right? So uh, be careful about it. All right. Performance parameters. The same four numbers. Uh, we, we saw P0, P of J. Other than that, other than that probability, we have these four, two counts and two timings. So count the average size of the cube inside the Q system. Again, this involves P0. If your P0 is wrong, everything is wrong. All your decision making will be based on wrong number. So again, be very, very careful. Okay, uh, Using Little's Law, where we know that LQ is equal to lambda times WQ. So we just divide through and it works here. We have L is equal to LQ plus uh, what we can think about as L of S. the average number of customers stuck in the or served by the servers in the service area. Average number of customers. So lambda over mu, actually the implied utilization refers to another sense, right? You, implied utilization is more on the server side. On the server side. How overwhelmed will the server be? But because whenever server is overwhelmed, is busy, it is always facing a customer. So on the customer side, from the customer's perspective, L, uh, lambda over mu gives us the sense of how many customers are withheld you know, by servers or, or if you like, served by servers in the service area. So uh, last time when we talked about one server situation, the number is always hovering between zero to one. Not very interesting and uh, might even be sounding very trivial to include them. But this time round, your servers, your number of servers, K, can be large, can be uh, 10, can be 20, can be 100. And if that's the case, uh, it is very ready, very high capacity, very ready to serve customers. And if the service time is long, then indeed you will tend to see a lot of customers end up uh, being so-called stuck in the service area, uh, served, being served by customers, are uh, being served by the servers. And at the same time, you don't see any queue building up. So the average queue size will be like 0, 0.0 something, very, very small. But the LS will be very large. So LQ very small, LS very large. Possible, right? Last time when we talked about one server, it is not possible to have more than one customer at the service station because there's only one server. So LS tends to be small. LQ can be very large, and then we worry about that, right? So this time round, it may be both. It may be both large, both small, and we the, the whole point is LS being equal to lambda over mu is no longer trivial. All right, so pay attention to that term. And finally, one last application of Little's Law will bring us to the average waiting time uh, in the system, including the time being served. That is, W itself includes WQ plus WS, which is equal to uh, WQ, the WQ that we have calculated, plus WS, the time that is needed 
to be to to clear the server, which is an odd way of saying that uh, ws is just equal to one over mu. Okay, the time it takes to cross the service area, ah, uh, service uh, service area, yeah. So so a customer when he or she is being served by the bank's cashier officer, any of the cashier officer will take an average amount of time that he or she normally takes had it been only one server, one cashier officer serving him or her, right? There's no longer or shorter service time just because other servers are present. Does it make sense? Okay, so so even though K is now 2, 3, 4, 5, 10, uh, my 1 over mu, my average service time, is not affected, is not a function of k, at least in our setup. And also most of the time in real life uh, seems to be independent of each other. Okay, So that's our way of uh, thinking about it. Now let's turn our attention to an extended version of last example uh, that we saw about the toll road having one attendant. At that time we were saying the attendant was the server, so k equals to 1. Cars arrive in Poisson fashion. So that means they arrive. Customers arrive. The first letter is M, right? And at a rate of 120 cars, it takes the attendant, the server, on average 15 seconds to serve a car. So we have uh, been given the 1 over mu. Service times are exponentially distributed. So we have second letter is also set to M. And last time our k was 1, so uh, we wrote 1. Now we have increased arrival rate, right? So now maybe it's peak time, peak hour, peak day. So 624 instead of 120. So and then uh, three booths in total are open. So we now have mmk where k goes to 3. So using the candle Lee notation, if you still remember, the first M refers to Poisson arrival rate. The second M refers to Poisson service rate or exponential service time. They are equivalent. And the three refers to having three servers. And the server rate, the serv service rate is not given because the booths are manned by people, the officers, toll booth officers, and presumably they are all equivalent and uh, they operate at the same speed, right? So it's neither faster nor slower just because your friends are there uh, manning the other counters. So what are the performance measures for the new system? So first of all, let's tabulate the known numbers. Lambda is now 10.4 per minute. Notice that it's way higher than mu. So we know that it cannot be a one server situation because lambda is already larger than mu. We need more number of servers, more multiples of mu. That's to say, so that k mu is just larger than lambda. It can be a lot larger, but that means we have to pay a lot to run the servers that most of the time might not have customers to uh, work on or serve. Right. So here, the smallest number of k that makes mu k larger than lambda is 3. First thing first, let's calculate implied utilization, 2.6. Remember, lambda over mu is also our WS, our average number of customers or cars stuck in the service area, our toll booth stations, right? So on average, about 2.6 cars are being served by the service. The rest are all waiting in the queue. So let's calculate the P0. Uh, we can use the formulas to calculate, right? And I will encourage you to use the formula because that uh, really expands our ability to deal with uh, any lambda and mu combination with any k combination. Yeah, from the table, uh, it's restricted to certain numbers, certain certain uh, listings of lambda over mu. 2.3, 2.4, 2.5, 2.6, 2.7, that's about it, right? So uh, what happens if the lambda over mu is 3.92, then you cannot use the table. Furthermore, uh, the decimal places that we get may not be sufficient, 
So uh, it's better to learn how to use the formula that, like I illustrated to you just now. Then substituting subsequently into the performance formulas to calculate LQ, WQ, L and W, they are uh, rather stable.